This week we're off to Costa Rica and one of my favourite farms in the Tarazú region, La Pira. So this week, as I said, we're off to Costa Rica and we're off to the Tarazú region. And you know, I like to kind of start these things talking about a little bit of like stuff I know about the regions or stuff I know about the processes or whatever. And it's really interesting with Tarazú that up until around about 2007, I never bought a Tarazú. I would always buy Central and Western Valley Costa Ricans because what happened in Tarazú in the early 2000s was coffee was kind of young but it was starting to become more specialty and people weren't talking necessarily about producers back then but they were talking about regions and Tarazu had this massive reputation of producing quality coffee and quite rightly so it was producing some amazing coffees from there so people started to market Tarazu as a region um, it was kind of like the first step to kind of breaking it down into individual farmers and areas and producers and towns and all of those details. So we'd gone from having just a Costa Rican coffee to having a Tarazoo. What happened to Tarazoo prices when that happened was they went because the demand was increasing um, and the supply was much lower. And when you get a higher price when you don't need to do anything, Tarazoo got a bit lazy. It got a bit like, ah, oh, we're okay, we don't need to do all of that fancy stuff because we're going to sell it anyway. And then individual farmers started to come in and people like me that wanted to buy quality and traceability were going to Central and Western Valley and going, wow, quality here is like so much better. So think about coffees like Finca de Licho, think about coffees like uh, Arbar, um, uh, there's a heap of others that uh, I can't think of at the moment because I'm stupid. But like we started to find these coffees and these relationships. But in 2007, I bought a coffee from the Cup of Excellence, which was from the Tarazoo region. And it was from this farm, La Pira. Um, Carlos Arena, who owns the farm, um, was one of those mavericks that actually didn't fall into, oh, well, we'll just do what he's want, because he got personal pride. He wanted to manage the farm well. He wanted to use the principles that he fully believed in to produce an amazing cup. Um, that got him into a Cup of Excellence final. We bought the lot in the Cup of Excellence. Um, for the next couple of years, our importer brought it in uh, that we were working with at the time, and it was always good. We got this great Tarazoo coffee. First one I'd found that I'd really, really enjoyed. And then the importer, as I did, went on to something new. We didn't get to get that coffee for a couple of years. And we fast forward to 2012, I think it was. And I did my first visit to Costa Rica in 2012 to go and find some long-term relationships where I wasn't relying on an importer to manage that relationship for me. Um, and while I'm talking to the exporter that's helping me find these relationships, I was telling him about this amazing coffee that I used to love from Tarazu, but I don't see it anymore. And it was you know, really good from this guy called Carlos. And he was like, Carlos Arena? I was like, yeah. He's like, La Pira. I'm like, yeah. He says, come on, let's go. So we jumped in the car. We drove to the farm. We met Carlos, who is... Um, uh, it took a little bit of time to grind down and get him to trust me because I think he'd had a lot of buyers come in the past who had come and then disappeared the year after. But since then, we've been working with Carlos and getting this amazing, amazing coffee. Um, he manages the farm... Do you remember a couple of weeks ago where we were talking about organic principles and organic certification? He's one of these people that truly believes in um, the organic principle side of what he does. So he creates his own fertilizer by uh, cultivating um, kind of uh, bacteria uh, from the mountain side uh, to put into his uh, organic fertilizer that he uses on the farm. So he's using completely natural products. Um, he uses a lot of the coffee cherries, um, which this bacteria will then break down into a compost that he can then use to feed the farm as he goes around. Um, you know, he doesn't like to use chemicals. He's got some really cool ideas about how to process cherries, uh, almost freezing them by letting water run across a zinc roof before it hits the cherries um, and leaves them the cherries soaking in this ice cold water. Um, that the wind chills the water as it trickles through this zinc roof. Like really, really interesting and um, uh, thoughtful coffee production. And that's what I think produces this amazing, amazing coffee. His attention to detail and his thoughtfulness and his carefulness um, makes this a really special coffee. Somebody's attention to detail, whose thoughtfulness and carefulness 
doesn't assist your coffee is our head roaster and our head daft fact person, Mr. Roland Glue's daft fact of the week. So I think I've tracked Roland down. He's hiding in here. Come with me. It's absolutely lovely, Roland, to see you as busy as ever. Have you got a daft fact for us? I have, Steve. Did you know that Carlos at the Pira has, in his storeroom, built a false ceiling to keep it cool in the sun? I also know that Carlos is pretty cool. He is. Cooler than us. So time for coffee. Before that, we have to do our Instagram post, of course, which uh, I really like this week's because I personally think life is too, too short for bad coffee, but this is allergic to bad coffee. Um, and uh, thank you very much for your contribution. Um, uh, your thanks and praise and pride is on its way in the post to you as we speak. Um, let's get into the La Pira. Um, love doing a white honey. White honeys are... On the lighter side of um, the funkiness scale, so um, closer to wash than perhaps uh, any of the any of the other honeys that you find. A lot of the mucilage has been removed. Um, let's see what we find in the cup. So you don't expect that. It's actually got a little bit of um, a sherry kind of funky kick to it, which. After him saying all that about the uh, the white honey, kind of surprised you a little bit. But what you do get coming through in the aftertaste is a lot of passion fruit, um, a complex sweetness. This is not just your normal, like, oh, it's a bit sweet. There's a little bit of fruit sweetness. There's a little bit of sugar sweetness. Um, whole heap going on in there. Really complex cup. Um, and I think a lot of that is because of Carlos's uh, fantastic work on the farm. Thank you for joining me. Um, if you're watching this before or after the new year, May uh, you be having a happy one. And do remember, life is too short for bad coffee.